Whoa, Dudesy! Dana Burger! If you knew that I was referencing the Code Man from Step by Step, then you're the exact person that will appreciate today's deep dive. Oh, not right now, Uncle Frank. I want to get this lasso and stuff mastered before the Wild West Cowboys of Moo Mesa comes on. Whatever happened to Sasha Mitchell? You know, the guy who played Cody on Step by Step? This channel loves TGIF stuff, and, well, this is one of those mysteries that I wanted to kind of solve. Since the algorithms know me so well, I'll often get articles like TV stars that were fired from their hit show, and they always include Sasha Mitchell. How did he go from breakout star of Step by Step to completely off the show? Ooh. Yikes. Ooh, yeah, I can see why he was fired from the show. Yeah, that's not good. And I see that headline, and I want to know more. But wait a minute. What's the full story? Because Sasha Mitchell does come back for one of the last episodes of Season 7. And these articles often have his name associated with negative articles like stars fired by major TV shows, reasons why I'll never watch Step by Step again. I ran across this Bustle article, and it points out that he did have a troubling arrest in 1995 for beating his wife. And it doesn't look like one of those situations where you could argue that, you know, it's he said, she said. He was convicted. He was given three years of probation and ordered to perform community service and attend counseling classes for spouse abusers. And he didn't comply, so he spent 30 days in jail. But then they'd allow him to leave to go film his parts on the wholesome sitcom Step by Step. We would always film on Friday nights. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So none of this is adding up because if he's so bad, why is he still allowed to do the show? Is Hollywood that morally? Yes, it is. The yeah. ladies screamed for Cody. And maybe some boys too, I don't know. But the yeah. ladies in particular loved Cody. <laughs> so that's why these stories always felt incomplete to me. If Sasha Mitchell was such a bad guy, why did they not fire him? Why did the jail still let him go to set? Why would Step by Step still take him back? Maybe everybody dealt with it because they knew what I knew. Cody is the reason you watch Step by Step, okay? It's the reason that way back, I made a top 10 Cody Lambert video. Step by Step was an American sitcom that starred TV veterans Patrick Duffy and Suzanne Somers. And they were both coming off huge 80s hit shows. In fact, Patrick Duffy was just coming off Dallas when he landed the role for Step by Step. When the show was finally canceled, that was the first phone call I got. They said, we want you to come and do the show called Step by Step. Step by Step aired in the classic TGIF block on ABC. Full House, right. Family Matters, mm -hmm. Step by Step, mm -hmm. Perfect Strangers, and then at one point it was Boy Meets yeah, World. Yeah, Boy Meets World's in there. There was a Going Places. In the pilot episode of Step by Step, we find out that Carol Foster and Frank Lambert secretly got married. Something's coming to me. It's a brand new show called Step by Step, and it's up next. Carol Foster and Frank Lambert meet on a vacation in Jamaica that launches them on an adventure of a lifetime. I'm getting a vision. I see a woman. I see a man. Whoa, I see six kids under one roof. I see an enormous line for the bathroom. Let's just see the show. Now, how are they going to break this news to each of their three kids? Yes, Step by Step had a lot in common with the 70s show, the Brady Bunch. And while Step by Step was not an immediate success, the show would last seven seasons. We survived for seven years on the, on the air. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's a huge successful run in nowadays. Seven, seven seasons. Seven seasons. Longer than you were on Three's Company. Yeah. Like critics weren't sure about it and it didn't get like the greatest of ratings in the beginning. All of this stuff I didn't really remember until but my mom does. ABC believed in it. The producers believed in it. They believed in the concept of it. And it took like, you know, took six or seven shows for it to really like catch on in that family for the ratings not to drop. And a big reason the show lasted seven seasons was Sasha Mitchell's character of Cody Lambert. Cody was introduced as Frank Lambert's nephew. Some people would call him a Keanu Reeves knockoff, a surfer slacker dude. But you know what? There was a lot more to the Cody Lambert character. Nobody expected Cody to be a good mm -hmm. character. That was a guest, Cody was a guest star. Cody just came on for like an episode or two, but the ladies loved Cody. He was the breakout 
star on our show like the Fonz was on Happy Days. The character of Cody Lambert was first introduced on Step by Step in the episode First Anniversary, the fourth episode of the first season. I'm Frank's nephew. I live in the van in the driveway. Oh, right. The two of them had already played uncle and nephew on the huge hit 80s show, Dallas. I didn't watch Dallas, but you were like Patrick Duffy's nephew, and then you have the big run on Step by Step where you're Patrick Duffy's nephew. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that funny? And little known fact, wasn't Sasha Mitchell on the show? Sasha was on the show. Oh, you're he kidding. He was your nephew? He was my nephew, Larry's illegitimate son. But roll. I played uh, James Richard, like J.R., James Richard yeah. Beaumont. I was like an illegitimate son, showed up when I was like 20 already. Wasn't he your nephew on Step by Step 2? He was my nephew on Step by Step. So what? He just follows you around being your nephew. As a matter of fact, he's going to be here. Yeah, I was going to say. I was like, please. You know, I always felt that in a past life, I was an oil baron or a rancher. You you think anyone would believe that I was once one of the most powerful millionaires in Dallas? Nah. Nah. And I actually thanked him, like, profusely, you know, for getting me the job. And he's like, no, man, they didn't even tell me you were coming. Step by Step was very similar to its TGIF counterpart, Family Matters. In fact, according to my video, they're in the same universe. To our favorite ABC show, Step by Step. Bottoms up. That Step by Step was a really great show. I truly enjoyed it. It's fun, don't you know? A laugh with Step by Step. You think you can find love in a motorcycle magazine? Well, that's where I found my bike, and I love that. Next Step is Step by Step. In the Family Matters universe, even though the show was based on the Winslow family, the moment we saw Urkel, that was the star. That kind of happened here. The Lambert and the Foster families were the ones that we were initially introduced to, and yet, as soon as Cody showed up, he became the breakout star. Something that Christine Lankin would even confirm on her podcast. And I get it, like, you could hear mm-hmm. audibly the screams, because we taped in front of a live studio audience. So when you have a breakout character like that, much like Urkel was, they capitalized on it. They realized, like, this is a character we now need to have on the show. So that became another person within the Integral family to write for. Sasha Mitchell became the face of Step by Step. Why else would the code man be all over the advertising? He says he heard a lot about the great new cartoons in the lineup, the Adams Family, Goof Troop, and the Wild West Cowboys, a Moo Mesa. <laughs> if you had a circus with the stars, let's invite Sasha. He could talk up Carlton Banks doing some sort of death defying feat. Hi, everybody, I'm Sasha Mitchell. You know me as Cody on the comedy Step by Step. But tonight I'm serious when I say let's hope the spin of that wheel is a lucky one for Alfonso. Wasn't this show about the Fosters and the Lamberts? Not according to the marketing. Deciphering the code, man. Translation? Life is an existential conundrum. Step by step. I bet ABC's TGIF is a lot more fun than having a date. You'd lose that bet. I bet Cody and JP have fun when they start a business. Don't go away. We're ready to hook you up with more laughs. Next on Step by Step, Dana studies Cody for her psychology class. Next, Cody's dad gives him a present that can change his life. It's time for the season premiere of Step by Step, where you teach Mark Karate. Yeah. Cody, what's next on your TGIF chowdown? Oh, Don't tell me. Wisconsin cheese? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Not just any cheese. Cheese in a can. <laughs> yeah. I hear Cody's going to college. We're just beginning to roll. There's two more funny shows to go. Next, Cody takes over story out. We'll you- on Step by Step, somebody thinks they're pregnant. Really who? Uh, I'll give you a hint, Mark. It's not Cody. Shoot, that was my first guess. Dana discovered she's allergic to Cody, and Cody may have to move out. There's not a Cody t-shirt or a doll or something, you know, I always so, so, so surprised by that. Totally, I'm actually surprised by that too. And Sasha Mitchell's real-life hobbies started working their way on to Step by Step. So even if you never saw a kickboxer movie, you could still see Sasha Mitchell kick some butt on Step by Step. Some episodes even showcase Sasha's fighting skills. You got to do martial arts in there. Was that your idea or was that the producer's idea? You know, like when we signed up, yeah, you know, I think that was like probably the second or third season. Um, I told them, I said, look, I got to go and leave and do a feature during these couple of weeks. If you want me to stay, I'll stay, but I've got to um, go do this movie, but I'll sign the contract and whatever. And uh, 
uh, that you know made them aware of my martial arts movies and things like that. And so I think it was just bankable. You know, if there's another audience that'll watch step by step for martial arts that are already martial arts fans that follow Sash, maybe we could draw them in. You know, that kind of thing really well. He even brought Gene LaBelle in. I remember <laughs> we had him on Step by Step. He was in there uh, a couple times. He was on uh, Family Matters with Julio. Mm -hmm. One time I walked in, it was so funny. All the producers were in there, and they were just in the next stage over from us. And I walked in there. You know, and like I saw him right away, like I bowed, I'm like, Sensei! Mm -hmm. And all these people are standing there, they don't know who he is. They hired him to be like a referee, because he does that sometimes, you know, in the ring, and like he's done that in movies. He was the referee, if you watch, in Kickboxer 2. He was the guy in the ring with us, with Gene LaBelle. So, and they're all looking at me like, right, this is Cody, right, from the stage next door. Why is he bowing to the ref? You know, that's so funny. But, um... That oh, was a lot of fun. So what happened to the character of Cody? You're watching for almost five seasons, and he's the main part of the show. And now he's just gone, with a few passing mentions as we go through season six. Listen, uh, this isn't really a good time to talk, Cody. Yeah, well, I'd love to hear about your new job in Russia, Cody, but I'm a little busy right now. We almost went a full season before we even knew where Cody went. It must have also been wild for the fans to hear the real life story. On the show, Cody Lambert is a guy with a strong moral code. And now we hear that the real life guy, he's off beating his wife. Didn't he do time? He beat up his girlfriend. This is the guy who ruined his career because he beat his wife. Oh my God, he kicked her and he caused a miscarriage? There was supposedly even an interview where Patrick Duffy admitted that's what got Sasha Mitchell fired from Step by Step. So let's start from the very beginning. What was Sasha Mitchell like before the fame? Sasha Mitchell worked as a male model, and he had been modeling in LA since he was 17, with names that you've actually heard of. I did, wait, I started out actually the Calvin Klein stuff. So it was modeling, like Calvin Klein and all that. But he wasn't just some pretty boy male model. The dude could legitimately fight. He was an actual athlete. So I started boxing like everybody else. Regular American boxing and like the PAL. So they have these things in New York, they're called the Police Athletic League, you know? And kids go there and, you know, beat the crap out of each other. I think boxing was very first. You know, even at the PAL, I used to go to the PAL over in, uh, in Queens. Maybe it's common, but I had never heard of it before researching this. This guy not only was a model, but he was also in military school. I've never really heard of the two crossing over. When I was in New York in military school, you know, we used to go uh, train boxing, like at the PAL. And the boxing would give way to martial arts and competitive fighting. Boxing took me more than martial arts. Sasha was a black belt in Taekwondo and an amateur kickboxing champion. My father was like the first Caucasian uh, Nam Pukai Grandmaster. And uh, I think I was the fifth Caucasian that was brought in as Nambukai. And uh, down at the uh, Shinto Temple, downtown LA, it's a Japanese American Culture Exchange Building where they, they would always practice uh, Kempo and uh, um, Kendo, the samurai swords. When I started working at TV and movies and stuff, I was out here and started training with Benny Akitas. Yeah, sure. Sensei Ben, um, was my teacher forever. And then he put me with Shuki, Shuki Ron, you know? So he's like Majiro Jim style, Thai boxing from Holland. Those guys, you know, bigger, taller guys. Martial arts started, uh, was one thing led to another like that before acting at all. I was doing, uh, I did some commercials. Look, I'll be seeing you around, okay? Is it love or is it Memorex? Remember that? There was like a drug commercial I did that was like, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs. That like won all these awards. My brother's friend Rick wanted to do something special for him for his birthday. He bought him some crack. Maybe it was bad stuff. Maybe they just couldn't handle it. And then I did the public service 
announcement against crack because that's when crack had just come out in like 82 83 and uh after that i did like a movie of the week where i spoke only spanish in it, it was an abc movie of the week and um it was ricky nelson's daughter tracy nelson she got sent down to south america and then supposedly met me and i only spoke spanish it was like that kind of a thing So it started out with other kind of TV and, and movies and things. And then the first feature I ever did was um, with uh, directed by Terry Leonard. You, you started out on, uh, your first big role was Dallas, correct? Um, I think, yeah. Uh, like long term, yeah, that was like four years. I was even able to find articles from people in the industry we were all worked up over the fact that he gave off this kind of 1950s rebel vibe, which made him the perfect person to star in a movie like Spike of Bensonhurst. Guys, if you've never seen Spike of Bensonhurst, do yourself a favor and whenever I actually make the review, watch it. Because it is like if Rocky was just a complete scumbag. I can't be exiled from Bensonhurst. That's my club. That's my turf. Man. That accent, can't you just see him on an episode of The Sopranos? This guy's like the perfect Italian. Even if online it says that he comes from Russian and Jewish heritage. And wait a minute, did this website just say that he's into bonsai trees? You know, I was raised uh, in the California Bonsai Society, and then eventually actually the Nampukai, the Grand Masters. My father's trees are like, you know, at the National Arboretum in DC and Descanso Gardens. My father has trees named masterpiece trees at the Nippon Bonsai Society in, in Tokyo. Okay, between the bonsai trees and the fighting, are we sure that Sasha Mitchell isn't just Danny LaRusso? I was born in LA and in Hollywood, so I wasn't like from some rural town and then Hollywood struck me. You know, I was born and raised there. To me, it was like actually acting, actors, models, that was like a bad thing in my house. My dad was in the garment industry. I, had, I, I didn't tell my dad for like a year that I was doing acting. I finally I got a movie, it's called Spike of Bensonhurst, and I got the lead over Ernest Borgnine, like I was the star of the movie, and I had to tell him that I was acting. <laughs> Sasha Mitchell, on the surface, just kind of comes across as a disciplined and driven guy. This was a guy who spent a lot of time learning different fighting techniques. And I started studying with Benny Akitas, um, Benny the Jet, and that was like around I graduated in 85, so that was probably like 87, 88. I studied with him for a lot of years. Um, and he had like Yukito Kai, his style. He made up, because his last name was Kitas. But it had a mix of a lot of different styles, like American hands, like for American boxing, not Thai hands. But he used elbows and knees and Taekwondo redirects, you know, and uh, round kicks you know, leg kicks from Thai boxers. So he has kind of a mixed fighting style. So I could see where that would make him violent in real life, but studies show that martial arts actually lowers aggression and overall anger, and trained people perform better under stress. If anything, having a sensei is actually a good thing. To some in the outside world, if you didn't watch Step by Step, you knew Sasha Mitchell as a C-grade action star. You'd hire Sasha Mitchell to take on the movie roles that Jean-Claude Van Damme said, yeah, I'm not doing any of those sequels. And so producers tend to give him a lot of leeway and they love him because he gets everything done, always. And he makes things look like he has this like artistic style and you know it looks really good, but it's done really pretty rapidly. And he, I think, decided to use that and uh, talking with Steve Friedman, he's like, Sasha's going to do it, I'll do it, but I'm getting this kid from uh, um, the dojo, and he's going to he's gonna do your boxer too. And I don't think Steve really had a lot to do with it or say. I think it was all Albert. To do action movies and kickboxing movies was Albert's vision. He said, you could do it. I know okay. you're going like, to be great in this movie. And I started training with uh, Benny and then for like, so maybe the lack of respect for his talent is what drove Sasha Mitchell to abuse his wife. 
Maybe he was more like his character in the class of 99 than we thought. 1999 too, didn't you? Yeah, that was amazing. That was really fun, man. That, that movie. Well, we got to blow things up, so it wasn't all just fighting. We were blowing cars up with like 25 gallons of gasoline. <laughs> that was a fun, man. That, that movie was a blast. Because, um, uh... Like the director was like a really big stunt man. Actually, the two of them, the stunt coordinator was his best friend. And, you know, between the two of them, like, I don't think it got much better unless you used Terry Leonard. And I did a movie with Terry. The first movie I ever did was with Terry Leonard. But those stunt guys were unbelievable, man. So, what am I investigating? The articles seem to make it all pretty cut and dry. Sasha Mitchell had been arrested on April 21st, 1995 after the sheriff's department received a call from Sasha's mother-in-law, who said that Sasha was assaulting his 25-year-old wife and endangering their stepdaughter. Publications like the Los Angeles Times would report on the spousal assault. June 8, 1995. Sitcom star pleads not guilty in spousal assaults. Courts. Sasha Mitchell of Step by Step is charged with three new misdemeanor counts in alleged beating. Sasha's attorney would say that the police fabricated the case. According to the prosecutor, Jeannie Mitchell had been slapped and kicked while sitting with her daughter. She tried to hide in the bathroom, but Mitchell kicked a hole through it. Jeannie would not seek medical treatment for her bruises. She would also tell the deputies that Sasha had previously shattered her eardrum and given her a concussion. <laughs> oh, dude, this doesn't look good for you. <laughs> Sasha's attorneys would argue that actually, Sasha was a very loving husband and had been devoted for the last five years to not only Jeannie, but his stepdaughter. And since Sasha was a trained kickboxer, if he had actually kicked Jeannie, the damage could have been a lot more severe. They found it suspicious that Jeannie had continued living with Sasha post this arrest. Municipal Judge Bruce A. Clark would deny Jeannie Mitchell her request to prevent Sasha Mitchell from contacting her or her daughter. Mitchell had no previous criminal convictions. All this turmoil would cause major headaches as they're trying to make season five of Step by Step. Yeah, so anyway, but yeah, there was some there was some stuff. And I think there was some drugs and there was some like fighting with the wife. Yeah, I was gonna say was maybe a little of, bit like, of wife beating. Going there might on. have been some, some wife <laughs> Jeez, beating. You say it so casually. Oh, very, just, just you know throwing it out. Patrick very, Duffy yeah. wouldn't stand for that shit. No, definitely not. No. It was, no. Yeah, it was Who? <laughs> Sasha would have to split time between prison and the set. Until finally, as the clickbait article told us, he was fired. Deep six, pink slip. I saw a vista baby. The fat lady has son. Don't let the door hit you. Damn, Cody. Cody's last appearance as a regular character would be in season five, episode 19, Do the Right Thing. Ironic, right? That title? Yeah. And losing Cody as a character was a major blow. They tried multiple times to get a new comedy character to break out, but it just didn't happen. They really wanted a new wacky character, so we had Flash. Good to meet you, Jake Gordon. People call me Flash. Thanks for giving me a chance, Frank. You're a wonderful guy, Frank. It is Frank, isn't it? <laughs> Season 6 would see Rich getting a bigger role. We'd even get a new character, hairdresser John Luke, played by TJIF alum Bronson Pinchot. September of 1995 in Ventura County, California, Sasha would be convicted of hitting his wife and be sentenced to three years probation and counseling. He'd spend January of 1996 in jail, but still be allowed to film step by step. May 3rd, 1996, a judge would sentence Sasha to spend 60 days at the Ventura County Jail for violating probation and continued violence against his wife. Since step by step wasn't filming, Sasha had to stay at the jail. That way we won't miss a second at TGIF. Oh. At this point, it all seems pretty cut and dry, right? Sasha is not coming across very well. In fact, he sounds like an asshole. But, uh, this is where it starts to get a little confusing. Spitting, name-calling, property destruction, striking his wife violently with a pillow. And this was the stuff he was admitting to in court. But still, the couple wasn't divorcing. They were going to work this out. Sasha Mitchell would be arrested for a second time on July 22nd, 1996 for no-showing court-mandated sessions with a spousal abuse counselor and a probation officer. 
And now here is where I wish I had way more resources, because apparently this became a big national story, and yet I couldn't find that much about it. Of course it was going to become a big story. This was going to shine a light on the domestic abuse issue. But like, hey man, if you want people to believe in you, I get... And I gotta tell the truth on a regular basis. And this story would even end up on Oprah. And this is crazy to me because I wanted to find these Oprah episodes. You know, for a woman who had almost 30 years of TV shows on a daily basis, there is very limited amount of Oprah available online. And uh, I tried to do the research, right? So I'm going on all the different places to track this down or even just try to pin down a date. And when I say I wish I had resources, it's to be able to dig into Oprah's archives. The year these episodes happened? No clue. TV Database has a mutated cataloging of some of the seasons of her show, but even then, I can't trust any of this. Jenny Erickson recalled seeing Sasha Mitchell send in a video from a jail cell while his spouse was on Oprah's set of Sasha Mitchell admitting to abusing his wife and even kicking his wife while she was eight months pregnant. Another user said that there was a follow-up episode where Jeanette said Sasha wasn't completing therapy and was violating restraining orders. Though I'm a little skeptical on her credibility because she kept calling Sasha Jensen. But I saw some pretty convincing photos in line down at the supermarket. <laughs> yeah, Mark, I know it doesn't make any sense, but neither does Cody, and he exists. <laughs> all right, it all seems pretty cut and dry, right? Sasha is a huge abuser. He's been busted on national TV, kicked off his show, and thrown in jail. Yeah. Tell me how it's gonna end. What's happening with Cody? <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was let go from Step by Step. It was an abrupt firing. Fans weren't even going to find out what happened to Cody until the last episode of Season 6. Though the last episode of Season 6 was actually the first episode that they shot for Season 6. Well, that's that. I mean, I get it. He screwed up his life and was making horrible decisions and wait a minute. Back on the show again? Dizzy's! The Code Man's back! <laughs> But, he's a terrible guy. So, you spent two years of your life searching for the ultimate quarter pounder with cheese? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, I guess M. Night wrote this story because there's a twist. When Jeanette Robbins and Sasha Mitchell divorced in 1997, Sasha, in court, would state that Jeanette was a drug user, and he'd actually been trying to protect his kids from a physically abusive mother. I don't know. I kind of think there's something to that. From my research, Sasha was the one who got full custody of the four kids, and the mother gets limited supervised visits five times a year. And if you're going by anecdotal evidence that you'll find online, I found a lot of pictures of Sasha Mitchell doing family things with his kids. So I gotta know what changed. So I go back to the forums. Some forum users would say that the ex-wife's vice was actually booze. And some said that she had actually been cheating on Sasha. That the ex-wife had also been selling the story of abuse to make money from the tabloids. They would say that it was actually Sasha trying to keep his family together. And that's why he took the rap as being an abuser. I don't know, this is all wild speculation. Which, uh, pre-internet would have just been out in the public, and now... I mean, nowadays, this type of stuff happens on internet forums and social media. So do you believe these people, or do you go by the cold hard rulings of a court? Which, if you've been following the story, had been ruling against Sasha. Or do you go by what you see online, where he just seems to be a single parent who is raising his kids, and just kind of comes off as one of these low-key kind of dads? I would tell somebody, be half an hour early, don't be on time. <laughs> Work as hard as you can, and don't grumble about anything. Being yeah. late, staying late. So is the guy at anti-bullying seminars the same guy that I just read all that horrible stuff about? Hey, I'm Sasha Mitchell. When it comes to bullying, we're kicking it together. Whenever I make one of these deep dives, you'll know that I love to see where both sides are coming from. 
If Sasha was such a bad guy, well then, even if they worked with him, you probably won't hear positive stuff coming from step-by-step -step cast members. And he... Yeah, they didn't say anything that negative, where they often just choose to bring up just how good Sasha Mitchell's comedic timing was. Sasha, what a <laughs> monumental talent. Unbelievable talent. Perfect timing, everything. There was one where I played Kitty Meow, and you guys remember Sasha Mitchell? He played Cody, the crazy cousin Cody. Oh yeah, Cody. of course. Yeah, yeah. He was the detective and that was the one where we got to wear like 1940s cop period yeah, costumes yeah. and i came into his office and like you couldn't trust me because you didn't know if i like i was a lounge singer or something mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was a super fun character to play like a katherine hepburn or... and they realized they had a really good um device storytelling device because they have this guy who's almost like a jedi master he, you mm -hmm. know, he's got this way with young people, but he was like cool and funny and seemed like a total like ditz, but actually was like the smartest guy in the room when it yeah. came to like matters of like, you know, the head and heart. Like he had a lot of really poignant things to say. So um, yeah, I think they realized like, oh man, we have like a great, uh, like a, a perfect storytelling device for what this show is and what were, even though these kids make some bad decisions or they get on each other's nerves, like, Here's the guy who can, who can kind of like, you know, like as you said, more compass, can like kind of set them straight, but then also like rail on an electric guitar. <laughs> At times I could feel some apprehension bringing him up, which, you know, that was kind of odd. Talented, well-behaved group of young actors on Aww. our show. Uh, that, uh, Except you know. for one of you, and you know who you are. No, yes. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> right, who right, who right, had right. the coke habit? That's what I yeah. want. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, just, that was well documented. Read about Hollywood. Show. That was well documented on our show. Yeah. Did we touch on Cody? We have not. No. We've mentioned Cody in passing and joking senses, but never talked about okay. it. Okay. No. Uh, there were some cocaine references yeah, there, made. I was just saying, that was so, Nick's so, su surprise. Well, Let me know. bring you up we to don't, Steve. We don't actually know who made those references. We don't, we don't have any factual evidence behind that. Some people were more upfront with their feelings about the guy. But what a screw up. And I tell him this to his face. We used to, he, he was so unreliable, but he was so talented that they put up with his behavior. But do you know that we would, when Sasha was in the show, it wasn't in every show because it was too much of a, a trouble. We'd have to write two shows, not me, the writers would have to write two shows. One if he showed up and one if he didn't. So that meant as the cast, we had to, to memorize two different versions of the same show. I never got mad at Sasha. I always just felt badly that he uh, had some disease maybe i don't know where he just was gonna blow it he was given all this talent and a lot of people are like that they're given these great gifts from above and then squander it by not uh, by not recognizing um how how great he was it was a good amount of time like he just didn't show up for work and there was definitely something going on and you know that's hard because you yeah. know you're a kid too so no, nobody's really talking about it because it's also like let's not talk about the drugs in front of the children mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean but i was like 15 or 16 like i'm not stupid i can read the paper i can read the paper so this is how, oh, my, yeah. how little i know so he actually had a drug problem yes uh, yeah so my there was a 2013 interview with kickboxer 3 director rick king that also paints sasha as a temperamental hothead the guy was a nut job and Sasha would go around threatening him. I think he thought people thought he was stupid. Which was true, King replied. And he was also violent. And he used his position of privilege as the star in a very negative way. Kickboxer 3 also came out in 1992, which is about two years into his marriage. I could see him being a hothead and this being our smoking gun. But then I also heard that the producer of these films would often try to sneak things into the film that weren't agreed upon when Sasha took the role. Now you told me you didn't really like Kickboxer 4. Well, it was fun, you know, I liked, because we had the Machado brothers there, right? So Egan and John were there. I loved them, like, 
they're like unbelievable, those guys. And uh, I liked the fights we did. We did it in like 10 days because um, I guess, I don't know if I should say all this, but um, Albert wanted to do a favor for Steve again mm -hmm. and asked me if I would do it with him and if we would do it in 10 days. You know, and I was like, dude, you, you know, and Albert's like, let's just go do it. So we did. Um, and I liked the fights. I liked the movie. I liked a lot of the stuff that we did. I didn't like some of the stuff that they did in post. Yeah, that had nothing to do with me. And I guess that's know? what I, I should have said, that you didn't like some of the more adult things that they kind of snuck in there. Yeah, they snuck in stuff and dubbed it and made people think it was me. Having sex with that girl on the, in the movie. And that's some weird fight with a pool net. Yeah. Which, <laughs> was... It was like... Right, I just, I was like, what the, what is that? Yeah, so you're like, looking you, for your yeah. wife. <laughs> yeah, so those two things kind of, I didn't really, uh, that made me um, kind of sever my ties with Steve Friedman. Because that's what he does, you know, he's like one of those guys that would, uh, he would time a movie, the fight sequences in Rocky, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why we had another huge fight in Simi Valley. At the end, we went to see me and all my, like, you see all these Hells Angels in there? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's because Steve timed Rocky and decided that we needed, you know, another like three and a half minutes of fighting in the movie to be a success. Um, so we did that. So was he defending himself? Besides, another director that Sasha worked with, Art Camacho, seems to be a lifelong friend. Yeah, Art Camacho is a wonderful guy. He's funny. He just texted me. He's nice. Yeah, we do that Dragon Fest together. You know, in California, they have that convention of martial arts people. Was it just that set? Maybe being around Patrick Duffy and Suzanne Summers was a calming thing. And being away from his uncle and aunt on set wasn't a good thing. That was fun. That was a really fun show. Suzanne Summers was so gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, she was a really nice lady. While making this video, I wanted to figure out how the step-by-step -step cast felt about him and about each other. Uh, Suzanne and I had, a, a, a not like daddy and mommy, but we felt responsible for the well-being of the, of the young people on the show. And since this show isn't as documented as, say, Family Matters, Boy Meets World, and Full House, I had limited resources to go to. But it seemed like Christine Lankin, Patrick Duffy, eventually Angela Watson, Suzanne Summers, kept in close contact with tabs on what everybody else was doing. So when it came to reboot talk, they all seemed game. And they always ask, what were Suzanne and Patrick like? And I say, the show was amazing. I had a wonderful experience as a child, and it was because of the two of them. It's true. It's yes. so true. It yeah, trickles they, they down set from the, the top. You and Suzanne set the tone. 100%. And, and we're as, so you know, throughout lovely. the years, I've done a lot of other stuff where that is not the case. And it's so interesting, especially as an adult, you walk on a set, and man, you can you can smell it from the moment you oh. walk on. The tension is so That it so is not thick. a happy, oh, happy yeah, no. house. Right. Suzanne is very much a... Um, very smart, like very smart businesswoman, mm -hmm. and you can like, and also very like self-deprecating, and also yeah. like very real, you know. And I think that's what always made her so appealing. She's just easy to get along with, and mm -hmm. she was also really, insanely good looking. Yeah, and had a really so good sense too. of humor about herself. Yeah, and that was it's very endearing. When you come on the set, that's your safe place, and you should be f you should feel free to do anything that you think is in in support of the concept of the show and then they can subtly tell you not to but you don't yell at young actors you don't berate them you don't you know do your producer thing and Suzanne and I were very adamant about you know the fun sense that a set should have especially when you're doing comedy and especially with young people you know sometimes he's so talented he's a talented guy very they all were they all were yeah. they had natural timing really natural timing I keep in touch with a couple of them. Um, some of them are, are like my children. I have two sons and I never had daughters. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I get Father's Day cards from Christine Lakin. And, and Aww. yeah, uh, she was my little girl I used to carry around while she was holding a pig. And now she's got yeah. a baby and she's producing her own show on television. He's, he's very dad figure, yeah, yeah, for sure. 
I, I mean, he's invited to my wedding, and then my mom made oh a joke. Oh my goodness! My mom made a joke on Twitter, and she yeah. was like, "Does he want to pay for it too?" <laughs> and I wrote something on Twitter. I was like, "He's like, uh, I would love to walk you down the aisle, darling dear, but I will not be paying for your wedding." <laughs> but I'll eat the cake. That's the most important thing. Yeah, he's great. Uh, Stacy Keenan is a lawyer now. Really? Yeah. Mm. Well, at what? Couldn't you see that coming? Though? Yeah, 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 I can see that. Business sense. She had the look. Yeah. Stacy Keenan. Um, I wrote introduction letters, and she got into law school after our show, and she's now working for the mm -hmm. DA in Los Angeles. Um, we just really were close friends. No, like everyone actually. I know it sounds really cliche. We actually all did kind of get along yeah. in a weird way. Like the girls definitely were. They were, you know. They kind of stuck together in the beginning, and then I was in this weird place where I wasn't like a, like a teenager yet, and the girls were older. Sure. But then I was like hanging out with like the boys, like the younger boys, and there was like Brandon Call in the middle who was just kind of like, I don't know whether I'm cool yet or whether I'm like still a kid yet. <laughs> so he would like beat us up, and I was one of like the little kids in mm. that scenario. That sounds like fun. It, yeah, it was kind of because he was actually kind of like we would mostly side with each other and beat them up. Oh, so, cool. it Alliances. Kind of out, yeah. A lot of people are always gonna remember you as Cody. Does that bother you at all? No, no, it's good to make people laugh, you know, like, that's why people remember you, you know, if you, if you can make people laugh, even for a minute, you know, like, uh, make them feel better, just for that minute or two, that's why they remember you, you know, of course they'll always remember that guy, because, you know, like, heartthrob people and things like that, you know, tastes change, and they're like, well, I used to like, you know, well, Chachi or something like that, you know, right, and then they're, and then they're 20 years old, and they're like, all of this did derail Sasha Mitchell's career. He never became a breakout star. He did continue to work. But the roles dried up fast. Instead of being one of the stars on a Friday night sitcom and a B-movie action star, he's just now one of many random guest cast members on an episode of Love Boat The Next Wave on UPN. Seven days and seven nights on the love boat. <laughs> so, I guess now we know why we never did it before, huh? The, the love boat thing was way over the top. We're in movies, alongside Ice-T, twice. For its seventh and final season, Step by Step was moved from ABC's TGIF lineup to CBS as part of their newly launched block party, alongside Family Matters, who had the same fate happen to them. Welcome to the CBS Friday Night Block Party. Four great shows. Family Matters, Migo, Gregory Hines, and Step by Step. What a party! Les was one of the last people whose real enthusiasm was the magic of making film. That's all he wanted to do, is just do... He was so excited about television and the process and the and the actual genetic makeup of the industry. He was not, he turned out to be quite a businessman, obviously. CBS has been number one forever. But that enthusiasm is why he picked up the show for the last season. He liked it. And he liked us. You know, and I, and I had done Dallas for CBS and, and I had known Les all this time. And, and, and you know, all the people at the, at the, uh, Miller Boyette Company knew less as well as any of the other network execs and he just said this show can still make money we can still do this and so he, he said I'll pick it up for another year now the problem was at the end of that year we dropped the last I think three episodes of the season yeah, we and that was about the that. tragedy that was supposed to be the wedding could the show have gone longer if Cody was back well maybe that's what the cameo was all about maybe they were trying to spark some interest and it's not like if you watched Step by Step, you were that shocked when somebody suddenly stopped appearing. There were Lambert and Foster kids that just stopped showing up. Josh's voice was starting to change. And when we moved over to, uh, I think, to Warner Brothers, um, they let Josh go. Oh, it was so cool. They didn't explain it. They didn't tell anybody where he went. It was sort of like they had this new child on the show. You know, the Carol and Frank had a kid of their own, and I think they were focused on trying to, like, sort of breathe new characters into the show, and it got to a point where they just didn't know how to write anymore for these other characters. So if Cody just comes back, are we that surprised? No. I wouldn't think so. 
but the Season 7 cameo on Step by Step didn't lead to a full return of the show. Step by Step was cancelled by CBS at the end of the season. Yep, sorry you have to go so soon, Coach. See you later. Ah. Hey, Jennifer. If I didn't know any better, I'd think you were trying to get rid of me. Yeah, and it was kind of like, un it kind of came by surprise because I think the last episode was going to be uh, Stacy and Jason Marsden, Rich, the Rich character, getting married. At least I heard that's what the plan was. And then the network cut cut it short, like if few episodes so we never really had that final you know like goodbye it was gonna be at the house and that was gonna kind of be this really sweet ending of the show mm -hmm. and I mean we were planning this thing like a wedding like yeah. I had a vision board in my dressing room so this was gonna be yeah this really nice kind and of we kind end. of all sort of had that feeling so it was like okay cool there's gonna be a wedding at the end it's gonna it be was like your maid of honor well, it was the, the it the was sisters. these two, of course. It was Lakin and Angela Watson, and we picked out their bridesmaids' dresses. They were in shades of champagne. It was such it. a emotional glass of cold, just throw, uh -huh. you know, cold water in the face. I just remember there was some this party. This is actually going to be our last episode, and we were all like, "What?" I in don't remember that. This, I, like, this is the last one. Well, everybody was there, and I remember see, walking in and seeing Patrick Duffy drinking a glass of wine, and I had never seen him drink ever, ever. He joked about how he liked, you know, his wine or whatever, but I never saw him drink. And when I saw that glass of wine in his hand, I was like, "Oh no, something is wrong." Something's up. And that's, I feel like, when I found out. Maybe. I think Patrick told me. Oh, maybe. At that party. I, so, don't, I don't know. It wasn't like we had 20 more episodes to do. There was two or three more that were going to be this wedding arc. Could just give us an oh, ending. God, yeah. You know? And for the fans. <laughs> All this drama definitely derailed the code man. This is what we would call these days canceling somebody. He went from a guy who could potentially be a star of a movie to small bit roles. Maybe he pops up in ER. Hey, Dr. Carter. <clears throat> Patrick. I'll get you a nice coffee and a BLT right away. But I'm gonna read you some of the titles that he did after this movie. The Chemist. Art's done like a whole bunch of movies, even that one that we mentioned that was The Chemist. Mm -hmm. He had just started that. Right after we were talking about it, I guess he saw your piece and he called me up and threw me in that. Olivier was doing another movie, Executive Protection. Did you see the um, trailer for it in the beginning? And then he called me to go over and do that. And then the first AD that was on the movie, he was doing one, uh, he called me to do that. So just uh, being with Art and Tom Renner, you know, we got three movies jumping off each other. Assassin X, Smoke-Filled Lung. It hasn't been filmed, but supposedly he's part of the martial arts kid too. Hi, I'm Don the Dragon Wilson. And I'm Cynthia Rothrock. And we're here to tell you about our new movie, The Martial Arts Kid 2, Payback. Uh, Don and his brother were telling me at the uh, Martial Arts Hall of Fame that uh, they were doing it, they wanted you, they wanted me in it. I would do anything with those guys. I love those guys. Sasha Mitchell is a martial artist and an actor with three dozen credits, including being the lead in Kickboxer 2, 3, and 4. We are very pleased to have added Sasha to the cast. Be sure and spot me on The Martial Arts Kid 2 and on Father to Father, two new movies I got coming out. Father and Father. Yeah, I mean, if people call me, like, and, you know, it's usually people, well, like Hart, you know, he had me do something last year. I think, yeah, and uh, New Jersey, that father and father thing. And then... Oh, yeah, father and father. Well, it's going to be a comedy. So I guess on the onset of father and father, you have a, a mob guy played by Chuck Zito, who I think it has been shot a few times by me, and he goes running into a church to find these priests, father and father, and uh, make a confession before he thinks he's going to die. So, is there any truth to another kickboxer movie? I don't know. It depends on Albert and how he feels. He wrote another script called uh, Algiers that he wants to do right now. Oh, okay. Algiers. Is, it, is that the Cyborg? No. no. That one. That's another one. Oh, you did do it? Arts of it. Oh, okay. It's not MS right now. He owns the kickboxer thing. And there's another company that's doing one. 
that it's not going to be called Kickboxer, but it's going to be that story. Either they're doing it in Louisiana. I met the producer on it. Hey, look, something high profile. Here he is with Selma Hayek for the movie Drunk Parents. Don't be bitching to me about your rich life, your spoiled brat daughter. You know, you're going to be out of here in a minute, and she'll have her mommy back. But now, thanks to you, I'm stuck in here for God knows how long. Next week, I'm starting a, a comedy. Really? Yeah. They put me in this comedy. The guy that wrote it, Fred Wolf, he did uh, Black Sheep, Little Nicky. He did, like he wrote like 200 episodes of Saturday Night Live. Really good. It's uh, Salma Hayek. Will Ferrell, those guys, um, Alec Baldwin. But hey, he did get to star in some real prestige cinema, like Slam, where he was the king of back bar wrestling. Yeah, we used to wrestle back bar when I was starting out. He was pretty good. He taught me a lot of my moves. And he was about to make the jump to the arena when uh, he ripped his knee up. Pretty routine move, actually. I guess it was just one of those freaky things, you know? I wonder why he never told us. Maybe because I'm the one that tore it. But, well, a lot of kickboxing movies. Okay. A lot of fighting ones, or at least like soldiers. I think I did like a uh, wrestling movie. One wrestling movie it was uh, Slammed. Oh, sure. Back bar wrestling stuff. Yeah. And, I think uh, I have a poster for that somewhere. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. it was right up here in Burbank. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. Sasha Mitchell is kind of just a low key civilian now. You know, it just seems like this guy went off the radar. So if you wanted to talk to him, well, is Facebook gonna work for you? Not really. He's not really there. No, Facebook, I got a thing. Twitter, not really active. Twitter is Sasha, at Sasha727. I don't know my name on Twitter. On Twitter, I got, uh, got a thing in there. Instagram, not active either. Sasha Mitchell. And you were in what movie? You were in Kickboxer 2, 3, 4. He was in uh, Substitute. Uh, what is it, uh, Paso a Paso, or Siete Anos? But on Instagram, I'm there. Um, let me look at it. I'll tell you my I, name. I can show you, I follow you on Instagram. You're sporadic on there, but I do follow you on there. Oh, yeah, so, like, I got that. And I got the, uh... Oh, it says the real Sasha Mitchell. Yeah. It's me and my dog, but... You're not a big social media guy, are you? No, man, I work. I guess that's why it would be easy if somebody was to just fabricate an interview. Eight that have Sasha Mitchell, but like the one that's uh, the real one is, yeah. My son and I, I think, are the uh, picture, and then there's, uh, I'm going to Gmail, Sasha727. He still acts, but he kind of just does the real jobs with consistent paychecks. He might make an independent film every so often, but he mostly works with his hands. And from what I saw, the dude is legitimately talented at welding. He'll post some of the work on his Instagram that shows off some of the stuff he does on the job site and projects that he's working on. Really good stuff. These repurposed chairs? That's something you'd see on American Pickers. And welding is a family trade. No, I spent 12 years building uh, condo complexes, welding, and then I got a good 10 years uh, building email servers all over the world for this t-shirt company they made like gas Annika, ping zara you know like theory all that stuff and then uh i don't know i just kind of ran my life and raised my kids and i uh, didn't really go looking for movies are you gonna go back in the film you know i like it i actually like doing it i love doing it um i just you know i I never really stopped to go look for a job again. Yeah. You know, like, I, I mean, I did, but it was yeah. always work. Yeah. So that's why I did so many different jobs over the years. Like, yeah. build email servers and networks and wireless networks and websites. Or if a contractor calls me up, I'm welding and I'm doing construction sites for, you know, six months. And it's just, uh, or even like I was cooking for a long time at Farmer's Market yeah. restaurant. I'm just a welder, man. I'm a sweetheart. You know, like, it's funny. I look scary, but I'm just drawn that way. You know, I'm not really. I always like on these crazy deadlines, and I kept dreaming that I had like 250 pieces of a chandelier on the floor that I had to weld up. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. There's no chandelier. There's no project right now. Yeah. Wake up. 
And it made myself wake up. I go right back into that dream. And I kept waking up and going to sleep and waking up and going, that's not true. You're all right. You already did it. You know what I mean? I've done that. I thought I was work. I had to do it. I didn't. So when he left Hollywood, he focused his time on going to work and raising his four children. You know, people call me once a month and say, what you do a movie? But I work for a living. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had time when I was a kid looking for movies and playing with TV people, you know, and then working my jobs at night. But then, you know, as I got older, I had kids. I raised four kids on my own. So I didn't really have time to look for jobs. I had four jobs, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I didn't really focus much on movies. I was just doing whatever, you know, anymore. Mm -hmm. I take it your kids are all grown now? Yeah, my youngest is uh, 25, just turned 25. And uh, 25, 28, 30, and 32. Oh, and yeah, mine's only 11, so I, I, I've got a lot of time left. Yeah, but it'll go by like in 10 minutes. It goes by too quick. Way too quick. See, the acting's great, and you know, if you can make people laugh or you can teach somebody a story, you know, I love yeah. doing that. I yeah. really do, you know, and uh, I wish I could do it. I just, you know what it was? I think for so many years raising my kids, I just didn't really stop and ask for work. I cook, I raise four kids alone. I do, I paint nails, do the hair, detangle and spray, the whole thing. You know, I had a lady that I hired that was she was my housekeeper lady and I got her a van and she would drive and pick my kids up from school. I dropped them off in the morning and went to work and then she would pick them up and drive them to the studio and then I would drive them home and cook dinner. And I guess they all are martial arts kids. Yeah since they were babies you know we'd warm up stretch kick punch um, yeah they trained at the Jet Center with Majid and Sensei Ben and everyone. Sasha Mitchell is still in legitimately good shape it takes me four days to get through my whole body. Okay. So I'll do like, you know, like legs and the next day and you can do anything, but yeah, you just pick chest with, yeah. and tries and then back and uh, maybe buys and then shoulders alone and then legs again. Hey, I was talking to Sasha off camera. He's looking good. Look at this. This guy, you're a stud. Screech. The Hanson Brothers. Cody from Step by Step. You know, I still, uh, I mean, I love like, I love my veggies and my greens, but that's also yeah. positive. And sushi, and I cook like crazy sauces and all this stuff for the kids, but um, I still, I eat meat and I eat dairy. You know, when you want to teach your body to burn the fat that's just sitting there, you got to go and carb deplete. You know, and like the first three days, I think you're just using up the glycogen that's in your muscles. Okay. After that, you're actually burning fat stores. His voice is deeper, but when he started laughing, I was like, yeah, that's Cody. That's Cody. <laughs> well, I'm, see, you, you see? Let's hope this sticks. Yeah. Oh, dude. oh yeah, I got a bunch of stuff here. Traveling today? Yeah. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. If you want to see him, he might pop up at a martial art event. Well, uh, like, you know, if I go anywhere and take off enough work to do anything, it's going to be probably the Martial Arts Hall of Fame, you know, with all those guys. Mm -hmm. With those guys, Kerry Tagawa, he's always there. I love him. And, uh, you know, it'll be my sensei and just everybody's always, you know, at that and I love it. You know, Chuck Zito, he's like one of my favorite guys in the world. He's and, cool. uh, yeah, Don's always there with James and, uh, you know, the Wilson brothers. And then, I mean, everybody's always there. It's just, you know, it feels so good to be there with them. And it's January in New Jersey, so nobody else... It gives them discipline. A lot of times, you know, these kids, they come into the martial arts studios and they don't know how to focus. They don't know how to listen. And a lot of the first year, even getting yellow belt, most of the time, really what you're teaching these kids is how to focus on listening. If they think like the biggest thing in the world is this bully that's picking on them at school, or the biggest thing in the world is like, you know, the algebra test they're about to face. And if they realize, you know, no, there's a creator, there's my sensei, there's my family, my parents, there's myself. This world is a big place. Absolutely. There's solutions to problems, lots of them. I've got friends out there I can speak with, I can talk to my dad anytime, I can talk to my sensei if there's something touchy I may not want to say to my dad, you know, or whatever it is, you know, and there's always just different levels of family because like they say, you know, it takes a nation to raise a kid. Got to have a big group, got to have a bunch of people. And I think a belief in the creator of whatever 
creator you believe in. And despite having a rather notorious exit from Step by Step, he seems like he's still a big fan of the show that he worked on. That was a blast. So we would just, you know, blow things up and have a blast. It's like, ride your motorcycle through the kitchen. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he was really great, man. So Step by Step was a blast. It was really fun. And it's like uh, it was a live audience, you know, so it was, it was really good. Something tells me that if they rebooted the show, he'd come back. Do you still talk to any of the people from the show? Patrick and I will email here and there. And that was kind of something that when everybody was rebooting their 90s and 80s TV shows, it was joked about. Full House comes back, Boy Meets World comes back. Why not see if Step by Step could come back? Some of the cast members were game. They could certainly come up with a reason to make this show happen. Let's get a reunion finale special and end it off the right way. Let's start pitching that to like Hulu or something. Yeah. <laughs> It's been talked about, but never really, really in like a real way where people have like approached, you know, how it would happen. Um, I know that in in my own discussions with, you know, Patrick Duffy, uh, that he was like, the last time I spoke to him about it, he's like, yeah, if it's the right script and the right thing, he's like, I would be totally down. Even Stacy, who is gone, she has a completely different career now. She was like, I think we could make it work. Like, I think we should get it going. Patrick yeah. says he's in. Stacy yeah. says she'll come out of, she'll stop lawyering for a few days a week. Yeah, why So that not she could go to, she's like, I think we could work it out. Like, Great. Right. It's a movie, you know? Right? The, the why has to do with the very kernel of doing a sitcom, especially resurrecting a sitcom. Mm -hmm. Because the whys generally are, but there's a ready-made audience and, and it'll be successful. That's not the why. No. The why has to be inherent in the writing and the premise of the show, and I can't think of a why, and I'm pretty good at thinking whys. Well, could the Brinks truck be a why? Step-by-step -step reboot. I really like that. Really? Yeah. I think we should get a reboot going. They yeah. should be doing our show, just step-by-step. -step. Right. What about if we did something like a reboot? Of the show? Of step-by-step? -step? Yeah. I think about it all the time. I just feel so comfortable around family. No, you really should put some clothes on. If there was a step-by-step -step reboot, oh God, would you do it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. But see, Lake Skins here work, thinks though? it will never happen. I see. I disagree. I kind of do too. I guess I, I don't understand why not. I don't know. Could I we just not just get everyone? You think? The only thing that came across as kind of odd is that they said that they had no drama until the very end, and then laugh. Now, was that about Sasha Mitchell? Or was that when Brandon Call almost got killed by a gang member because they thought he was part of a rival gang? And that's what drove Brandon Call away from the acting world. I mean, there's really nothing we didn't have. They're just, it was drama free. It was, it was yeah. very, until the very end. <laughs> Yeah, they're okay. They left us. And if it came back, what would a 50-year-old code man be doing? Does he have a family? What are mini Cody's like? What is a female Cody like? Which is like the kids now blending their own families together or in some way, you know. You know, the kids are back and they have their own kids and... Yeah, you know, and maybe somehow it's maybe it's one of these situations where the, it's a multi generations living in the same house together. That's what I, well, you know, you know I, I always have felt like JT would JT would still be in a basement. It's like <laughs> yeah. Cody was in a van. JT would right. still he, be he in works at a video, basement. the last video store. The on last Earth. video store. On Earth. He maybe owns and runs that. We're missing something. Where where's the code man in all this? Oh, the code man. Yes. How could I forget the code man? The code man is got to be the comic relief of the show. The code man uh, is, you know, still driving around in a van, um, but is secretly a billionaire. He's the only <laughs> one who's actually done well for himself. He has like, like he created like a, like a floby, you know what I mean? He created like one of those things that's like so dumb, but makes so much money. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and everybody is basically trying to butter him up all the time. Uh, and I think Al actually has a pretty good relationship with him proud to ask them for money that they were living in that house and they were there was like a new generation of of stuff and i think this way would have to be you'd have to focus on a character who maybe had gotten a divorce has a couple kids 
is marrying somebody like they're combining their families but like the old family is still in rotation you know right something. so maybe lily is a right. newlywed or something right Look, quite busy i think people would want the same tone right they would yeah. want that kind yeah. of really family friendly yeah. wholesome thing where you can definitely watch it with your kids you're it's not going to be too edgy or racy yeah. it's going to be a kind of a feel-good thing i think the tone would probably have to be the same yeah you can't make right? it like step by step and now it's what's breaking bad <laughs> right well no <laughs> but at the same time like for instance like like, 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 like 2010 to 2015 Sasha Mitchell was married again to a woman named Rachel. But that ended in irreconcilable differences. Also, I found it kind of odd that since Oprah stuck her nose in Sasha Mitchell's business, many years later, he'd hold no grudge. He'd even do commissioned work for her. What is this? That's an event for all 90s stars. Look what we have here. 90s Con is going to have a step-by-step -step reunion. There's Patrick Duffy. There's Stacey Keenan. Christine Lankin. Wow! Even Brandon Call's going to be there. Christopher Castle. And is that Sasha Mitchell? Yup. And he's going to be part of the panel. I guess there really was still room for the code man in the step-by-step -step family. You know, when things happen in your life and, and they hit you hard, like if you live your life positively and you get up, go to work and be happy, wake up your kids and get them to school and it's exciting every day, you're under the governance of man. You're happy and you're doing it. You can live three, four lifetimes in one life, you know, and do your corrections and bless everybody that you know and help everybody that you see. That's the way to live, positively. 